Blessed is the man and blessed is the woman who exposes your sin. You ought to thank them. Instead we get angry at them and send them nasty emails. Why don't you manage your own business? You got no sin in your life. You're not perfect. You're not Mother Teresa. You got that right. <laughs> Although Mother Teresa of Calcutta did a lot of Tov Mitzvah. Yeah. So, you know how I feel about that. That's Tov. Yeah. Zeal is birthed by faith, and faith leads to supernatural strength. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. We'll go quickly. I'll give you a couple more examples of Baruch Hashem Zeal. Corinthia Bet, Corinthia Bet, Corinthia Bet. AKA 2 Corinthians, Corinthians 7 11. <laughs> For look, the very thing that was distressing you that you saw it over, according to the things of Yahweh, you resulted from your great effort in your apology, yes, in your anger, your sin, yes, in the fear of Eloha, yes, in your Ahava, desire, and your zeal, righting all wrongs. Notice. The zeal of the Corinthians from the epistle numero dos, numero uno a epistle uh, uh, numero dos, was a rising up of zeal that corrected all carnality and chilul Hashem. And Rav Shul says, this key for my congregation is a total congregation. Even though you had problems with great effort, with great apology, with great anger over sin, with the great fear of Eloha, with great ahava to do his will, with great desire and zeal, you have now ended all Chilul Hashem in this congregation no longer misrepresents Yahweh, rather it properly represents Yahweh. Did you get that? The Corinthian Keilah became a Tov Keilah because they were willing to, to, to deal and avenge the character misrepresentation or Chilul Hashem. Do you see that? Hello? Amen. What does zeal do? It writes the wrong uh, representation of Abba Yahweh. Yahweh said, do Pesach. Did the Corinthians do Pesach? Yeah. They used it to gorge themselves with food. Does Yahweh sit in heaven and gorge himself with food? No. They were, they were misrepresenting Yahweh. Go ahead and get quiet on me. See if I care. As long as I'm preaching, you ought to be shouting. The only time you stop shouting is when I start preaching. <laughs> Especially if you want to be zealous. Yeshayahu 9. Yeshayahu 9. Isaiah. Yeshayahu. Don't you love the way the King James says it? Esias. What on earth is that? Esias. <sighs> Yeshayahu. Meaning Yahweh. Yahweh saves. Yeshayahu Yeshayahu. Okay, Yeshayahu 9.6. Yelid Israel, Shichmo, Krashmo, Peleues, El Gibor, Afi, Ad, Sar, Shalom. That was the actual Hebrew of Isaiah 9.6. Here's 9.7. Of the increase of his government and Shalom, there shall be no end. The Messiah's upon the throne, the Kisei of David, upon his Malchut, to order it and establish it with Mishpat, with Tzedakah. From now, Leolam, Voed. The zeal. Circle that word. The zeal of Yahweh Tzavah will perform this. What will perform Yahshua as the son of Yahweh sitting forever upon the throne of his father David to establish the kingdom forever and forever? What established that? The zeal of his father Yahweh. You wouldn't have a Messiah if it wasn't for the zeal of Yahweh. Yahweh is zealous and he wants his people to be zealous. Now we have to fight through demons, principalities, powers, spiritual wickedness in heavenly places in order to establish the throne of David. He was zealous for his purpose and he didn't give up until he saw every obstacle destroyed and put to rest and laid to rest so that the kingdom could be established and Yeshua could rule over the house of Yaakov forever and forever. If Yahweh had to be zealous to overcome demons, principalities, and powers, how much more do we have to give diligence and do diligence to overcome principalities, powers, and spiritual wickedness in high places? For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness in high places, principalities, and powers. We all believe in the throne of David. The throne of David couldn't be established without Abba Yahweh using that seal to 
establishing. The seal of Yahweh of hosts of all will and has performed this. Zeal brings the covenant. Zeal brings shalom. Zeal brings the priesthood. Ze Yahweh establishes the, even his second coming through yeah. zeal. That's right. Even his second coming is established through zeal. The two houses are being restored by the same zeal of Yahweh. Stay in Yeshayahu 37. Yeshayahu 37. Not only Yeshua reigns on the throne of his father David because of the father's zeal, it is a father's zeal that is allowing the two houses to be restored in our lifetime despite opposition from many quarters. Look at Yeshayahu 37, 32. And out of Jerusalem shall go forth a remnant. Notice, not all Israel will be saved, but a remnant. And they will escape out of heart, Sion. And the zeal of Yahweh will bring forth this remnant. The remnant of the house of Judah, the remnant of the house of Ephraim, the two houses becoming one, the remnant of Yahweh, not both houses will be saved, a remnant from both houses will be saved. What will? How do we know what will happen? The zeal of Yahweh of hosts shall do this. And we close with this, Yeshayahu 59, 17, Yeshayahu 59, 17. We close with this. Yeshayahu 59, 17. For he put on tzedakah, Yeshua put on tzedakah, as a breastplate and as a helmet of Yeshua upon his head. And he put on the garments of vengeance for clothing, uh -oh. to be to function like Pinchus, to weed out Chilul Hashem. Why is, Yeshua, why is Yeshua wearing the talit or the garment of vengeance? What is he avenging? He's a blood avenger. Hello? He's avenging the blood shed by, among his innocent bride, amen, by those who are committing Chalul Hashem. Yeshua is wearing the garments of, the, or, of vengeance as his clothing, and, that, and be, that he was allowed to wear and perform because he was clad with zeal as a cloak. Hello? So Yeshua's clothing was vengeance, and his, his what? His cloak, what is a cloak? A covering, a shoulder to ankle covering, right? His cloak was a cloak of zeal. How did Yeshua do his ministry? The zeal of Yahweh consumed him. The reproaches of all those who were reproaching his father, he took personally. It ate him up and he could do something about it. The father's zeal pushed Yeshua to do something about it. And Yeshua's zeal wanted to do something about it, and the father and the son were acting in perfect harmony, perfect tandem, as they were both zealous to establish the throne of David, the kingdom of David, the machut of David. They acted in perfect unity and perfect tandem. When you and I get zealous for the things of Yahweh against those who continually, without remorse, without repentance, commit chilul Hashem, we are, we are clothing ourselves as blood avengers for bringing death and destruction to Yahweh's bride, clad with a zeal as a cloak. Amen. Now let me close with this. Um, you see here, in footnote number 7, we see that Rav Shavuot quotes in Ephesians 6, look at me, he says, put on the helmet of salvation, take the sword of the spirit, take the shield of faith, have your shoes shed with the preparation of the Bisharot of Shalom. And so the NTOC, New Testament only Christian, says, Aha, uh -huh. you got to be like that Roman soldier. Because, because if you're not ready for war, you know how those Roman soldiers were. If you're not ready for war, the enemy's going to come against you, and blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. And the only part of the Roman uh, um, artillery or, or clothing that, uh, that the soldier didn't need was what? His back was what? exposed. And why? Because Yahweh covers your back. Oh gosh, it sounds so spiritual, but it's so full of balobna. <laughs> oh, you mean I can trust God when I got to my back turned? Praise God. Oh, well, man, we got to follow Apostle Paul and, and get dressed like a Roman soldier. There's only one problem. There's only one problem. Paul is not Paul, he's Rav Shaul. And Rav Shaul is not quoting and telling you to get dressed like a Roman soldier. Because, you know why? Because he's quoting Isaiah 59, 15 through 17, and Isaiah never saw a Roman soldier. 
No. I'll say that again. Isaiah never saw a Roman soldier. How could he be quoting, putting on armor like a Roman soldier? Look at Isaiah. He put on Yeshua as a helmet of salvation, the garments of vengeance, clad with zeal. Hallelujah. Yahweh is describing the dress of Yeshua, yes. and the dress of Yeshua is not the dress of a Roman soldier. It is the dress of an avenger of blood. <coughs> When you avenge blood based on Chilul Hashem, you're not a murderer, you are a zealot. And I'm not saying kill. Be very careful how you hear this message. Because I know what the devil's going to do with this, okay? Uh -huh. I know exactly what the devil's going to do with this. I bind you, Satan, and I command you to eat dirt and kiss the soles of my feet. Amen. Because that's where you belong, and that's the only place you're living with me. Yes. Yes. I spit on you, I take authority over you, and I walk on you. And it's always been that way, and it will always be that way. So I'm not saying take the law into your own hands. I'm saying there's a place where Yahweh wants you to get zealous so he can give you a covenant of shelemut, healing, wholeness, victory. Father, we thank you. Hallelujah. We thank you for your tov today. We thank you for your word. We thank you for bringing us through a difficult week. And Father, we thank you for the teaching you've given us today. We thank you that your people were faithful two times today to the Maser Yahweh and also to the um, Herzl Moed and Conference Hall. Father, we thank you that we would go in Shalom quickly. We would have Chavura and we would enjoy your fellowship, your company of the Kiddushim as the Hino comes from Rabbi Moshe Yosef Konachowski. I want to welcome you into our Broward County studio here, where we do most of the taping and programming for our uh, introductions and so forth and specials. When it comes to our Shabbat Club and other things we do here at Your Arms to Israel. It's a blessing to have you here. I want to share with you what many of you already know and many of you are already experiencing which is the most dynamic scriptural translation to hit the Nazarene Israelite slash Messianic marketplace uh, maybe in the last couple of decades. And some of our leading Aramaic Hebrew experts and other reviewers who are proficient in Hebrew and proficient in Aramaic have said that the Restoration Scriptures, that's right, I'm sure many of you have heard of it, received a copy, or maybe seen your friends using it or your loved ones or your brothers and sisters in Yeshua HaMoshiach, have heard about the Restoration Scriptures True Name Edition. We now have this Restoration Scriptures True Name Edition uh, ready. Our second printing is ready to go. We're going to be able to mail it out to you right away. Uh, usually most orders are shipped out immediately. The Restoration Scriptures True Name Edition contains 6,000 study notes, commentaries on the bottom about the Scriptures two house explanations regarding the true name of Yahweh. We have recovered many verses from the Dead Sea Scrolls, from the Aramaic Peshetta. More and more, we're plugging the Aramaic Peshetta, which is in most cases a more accurate rendering of the text, even preserving Yahweh's name in the Brit Chadashah. We've plugged that right into here. We've also taken portions of other documents, Matthew Shemtov, Ditule Matthew, and others uh, that we feel were legitimate, to combine what we feel is one of the most dynamic translations in the world. This product is published by Your Arms to Israel Publishing, and it's being used by Yahweh in a mighty way. We have reports of pastors. We have reports of rabbis, congregations, churches that use no other translation other than the Restoration of Scripture's True Name Edition. Every time the Word of Yahweh through this Bible enters into a congregation, it literally turns it upside down and gives new insight. For instance, almost every translation in the world speaks of Yeshua dying for our sins. Baruch Hashem Yahweh, we're thankful that Yeshua did die for our sins. However, most translations, for instance, in Matthew 26 and Matthew 27, speaking of the suffering of Yeshua, when Yeshua was on the tree of sacrifice, say, quote him as saying, Eli, Eli, Lama, Sabachthani, which is to say, my ale, my ale, why have you forsaken me? However, we knew that Yeshua was never forsaken by the Father. He even said that the Father is with me. You all will forsake me this night, but the Father is with me. I am not alone. He will never forsake me. 
But in the Aramaic, the words lemana, lemana, sabachthani do not mean my El, my El, why have you forsaken me? They mean my El, Yahweh, my El, Yahweh, why have you kept me and preserved me in this position this long? Meaning, I want to suffer, I want to die for the sins of the world, but this is taking an awfully long time. So, marvelous insights like that. Um, even in Mati Jao chapter 5 and Mati Jao chapter 19, where we go to the Aramaic and we show that Yeshua says, you cannot legally marry an undivorced woman. Not a divorced woman, but we match it up with the Torah. And we don't make up these verses, we take them right out of ancient sources, such as the Aramaic Peshetta, uh, the Dead Sea Scrolls. So the teachings that Yeshua has in the Restoration Scriptures, True Name Edition, match up with the Torah, and a lot of that tension between the Greek text and the Torah has been eliminated. Hardcover, leather bound, the second edition will be larger print. The footnotes have been expanded into larger font for easier reading. It's easy to carry, easy to use. It comes with a 20 page glossary lexicon in the back so you could not only learn the word of Yahweh the way it was intended to, to complement the Yahweh's full revelation, but you can also learn Hebrew while studying the restoration of scriptures. Everything you and your family and your loved ones have always wanted in the Bible, but were never able to find it. And many of us, including myself, would have to go to different sources to kind of piece things together so we can come out with a product, uh, or the knowledge, I should say, that Yahweh wanted us to have. We took a, here a little, we took there a little, and we went to different sources and resources to try to get the entire package. But now the entire package is available from Your Arms to Israel Publishing, the Restoration Scriptures, True Name Edition, a modified second edition. You can write to us on your address on the screen. You'll see it on our screen. Your Arms to Israel, 7378 West Atlantic Boulevard, 112, Suite 112, Margate, 33063. Or call today. We have a secure order line. All your credit card and debit card orders are secure. 305-868-8787. $60 per copy. You order 10, which is no, no big deal. You do want to get the word out. After all, this is Yahweh's word. The price goes down to $50, all the way up to 500 copies, where we can get the price down for you to $30. Call us. We'll discuss becoming a Lighthouse distributor, or you just may want a couple of copies at $60 each for your family and friends. Again, that's the Restoration Scriptures, True Name Edition. You can email us at info, and that's info at YourArmsToIsrael.org. You'll see it right there on the screen. Again, that's info at YourArmsToIsrael.org. And make sure to ask for the second edition, updated and modified for you, the second edition of the Restoration Scriptures, True Name Edition. Shalom, B'Shem Yahshua, Mishichem. See your face.